Hi uh, YouTube, this is Patrick, one half of Fuzzy Motion, and this is my review, reaction, whatever, to the season six premiere of Dexter, uh, one of my favorite shows. Um, pretty much the only reason to watch Showtime, uh, considering that Showtime is awful. Otherwise, I know they got Homeland, which I didn't tune into, I'm gonna catch it on uh, the Showtime On Demand, but um, seriously, like Showtime, I ordered it last year for Dexter. And uh, the only thing they had on other than Dexter was Inside the NFL and Inglorious Bastards. And then a year later, I mean, I, I stopped, uh, I canceled Showtime when season five of Dexter was over. Um, I picked it back up the morning of when Dexter was about to air season six. And once again, the only thing Showtime has, seemingly has, is Dexter, Inside the NFL, Inglorious Bastards. Uh, they've now added Twilight Eclipse to their lineup, so awesome. Um, seriously though, no. Apparently Homeland's really good. I didn't tune into it, but uh, anyway, regardless, Dexter season six. Okay. Um, I probably should at least give my like quick thoughts in the first five seasons so you can gauge where I'm at with the show. Um, I got into the show very late into season three, so I was able to kind of really, like, watch season one and two, uh, and most of season three really quickly, like, back to back. Um, so watching it in that way, season one still remains the best season of the show. Uh, season one is, like, near perfection. Um, season two is also great, but season two displays, um... I think the show's biggest flaw in that Dexter gets way too lucky sometimes. In season two, it happens way too much. I mean, he gets out of the situation that he gets in season two with the the Bay Harbor Butcher just way too quickly. Uh, but there's still a lot of love about season two. Um, but yeah, just it's not one of my favorites. Um, season three, we got Jimmy Smits, which was fantastic. Um, his moment in the recap of season six is what was just you know reminded me of how much I really enjoyed uh, him on the show. Uh, season four was with uh, Lithgow and the Trinity Killer was, I mean, to the show's credit, season four. If someone said that season four was their favorite season of the show, uh, you know, I wouldn't argue with them. Just like I wouldn't argue with season one. Pretty much every other season, I would say, like, I would probably kind of ask, like, why is that your favorite season? But not season one or not season four. Not at all. Then we got to season five last year. And basically we knew with season five last year that it was going to have to get us from point A to point B. Point A being that Dexter is going to be grieving with, you know, Rita dying. Um, he's going to be investigated for the killing. You know, Rita's kids are going to hate him just because that's just how it is. We knew we were going to have to get from that moment to where he's able to move on. And that's what season five was about, and the show suffered for that. Um, not just because they didn't know... Not that they didn't know what to do with it, it's just that's not the show we you know tune into week in, week out with Dexter. Um, we like our... we I think the audience likes their desk, you know, Dexter... Um, just happy and easy going, knowing just being in complete control of everything. Um, which is usually how a season of the show starts. With Dexter, it's like starts anew. Season 5 didn't, and I think that's why season 5 was probably the weakest one. But, we arrive at season 6, and once again, things are renewed, and as far as the episode goes, I'll just say it was awesome. Uh, it was actually a lot of fun. Um, which season five was not. Season five was not a lot of fun at all. And the best thing about and my computer shuts off. The best thing about season the first episode of season six is that it was fun. Um, everything with Dexter at his uh, high school reunion, you know, was great. Um, him saying "Hammer Time" is hilarious. Uh, let alone dancing. Uh, him being popular now, getting the um, uh, getting the blowjob from the real, you know prom queen it's just uh, you know it was all, it was all pretty funny um the uh you know yeah so pretty much like and his inner monologue like going back and forth with all that stuff was great michael c hall as always has been amazing from beginning to end i've watched him since i watched uh, six feet under 
Um, and it's such a, like a different performance. Him from that to this is great. He's been amazing. Uh, the theme of season six was really on display, you know, <laughs> pretty quickly that it's religion. And I'm actually surprised it took him this long to put like re bring religion into the mix because Dexter, you know, as a show, Dexter's really about like morality. Um, it's about what you, th how you think you should live your life, what are the right choices, you know, that and so forth. And that just ties into religion so much. So I'm really looking forward to that all season, to the just them talking about it. I read a review of the first like three episodes that says they got like way too heavy handed on religion, but. Or just like they, they, the comparison to religion and everything else going on in the show was just too much. Um, but I'm real. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's gonna be fun. Um, speaking of uh, the, the religious aspect, the big bad of the season comes in two forms with uh, Edward James almost and Colin Hanks as two religious maniacs that are apparently killing people. I don't know. They were using some Greek letters. The almost was quoting something from Revelations. So, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't, it doesn't matter. I, I, you know, whatever their end game is, we don't know it yet, but uh, it should be pretty intriguing. Uh, they're better than Jordan Chase. They're uh, a bigger adversary than, I think, Miguel Prado. So, um, so uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what they got in store. Um, Let's see what else. Also, uh, Most Def is coming on in uh, a couple of weeks. Maybe next week. I don't know. Um, he's going to be someone where we don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy. So it's actually potential that Dexter has three adversaries this season, which is, you know, that's pretty nice. Um, the rest of the setups for the season, I was actually enjoying pretty much the Deb and Quinn storyline. Deb is great. I've always loved Deb. Um, Quinn, I used to obviously hate. I think a lot of people did. I actually like Quinn now just for the fact that he is nothing but in over his head with everything. And it's constantly funny. Um, just him propo trying to propose to Deb. It's just going to be really awkward. And uh, I'm actually looking forward to seeing where it goes. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, oh, Batista, not married to LaGuerta anymore, is fantastic. Frees him up. That's how we like Batista. Uh, I like the use of his sister, being Dexter's, um, uh, Harrison's nanny, rather. Um, the problem is, though, she's living right, like, next door, to, right around Dexter's, so you know almost her Hanks are going to find out who Dexter is at some point this season, go to his house, and who's going to be there, but probably her. She's probably prime for bait, uh, so I'm betting we're going to see that sometime this season. Also, the fact that she knows that Dexter leaves in the middle of the night. A nice little drop in the first episode. Well done, uh, writers. Uh, let's see who else here. Uh, LaGuerta, still annoying. Still don't like her. She rose to the top through blackmail, which makes sense. Um, the only thing good about that is that eventually, when you, get, when you rise to the top like that, you know you're going to come down somehow, so uh, looking forward to that, possibly. Uh, Masuka's got a bunch of interns, which finally giving Masuka something to do, except uh, instead of being comic relief, he'll be comic relief and he'll have something to do this season, which is the first time uh, for that, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, just in general, I I'm looking forward to Dexter taking on uh, Edward James Olmos and Colin Hanks. There's a moment where he, you know, was on the beach looking at the new, the, uh, the uh, the fruit stand or whatever his like body and he looks out into the ocean as if like thinking like here we go again and I was like okay here we go let's see what he can do let's see you know let's see how this plays out I'm I'm really I'm you know I'm pumped for it I'm really looking forward to it the negative of the episode um, wasn't surprising because it's the biggest negative I have on Dexter is that the writing sometimes gets uh, a little lazy in the sense that uh, while Dexter's brilliant and you know, he's physically capable of beating somebody in, you know, on top of mentally, they, he just gets way too lucky with too many things. Um, that's why season two, it really annoyed me in the second season where he got out of that situation by pure luck. Pure luck. Um, because of, like, Lila and Dokes not telling LaGuerta, like, the full evidence and all that stuff back then. Um, but, you know, this episode, like, he, yeah, he kills, like, the jock, um, and, 
first of all, Miami Metro, you guys suck because you know there'd be a missing person missing persons report after that. Like, hey, we all got together and this guy disappeared. You know, the most popular guy here. Yeah, no one would notice. All right. Even the paramedics thing in the beginning of the episode. You know, how would he know to get two paramed the, new, the those two paramedics there then. What about the woman that you know he called in the 911 phone? Shouldn't she send? Sh wouldn't she you know send someone else out? Whatever. The point is, it was lazy, but it didn't matter because you know uh, that's not why I tune in the Dexter. Uh, it's not why anyone does. Um, it's a TV show. Uh, it's better than all the CSI ones and everything like that. So um, you know, so just forget it. Bear with it. Um, let's see if there's anything. I'm trying to think of something else. Oh, on a possibly negative note, uh, Showtime and Michael C. Hall are having a big problem with their contract. Um, they're apparently negotiating for two more years, um, and they're they're really like locking horns to the point where they've stopped talking. I think I just read it today, so we might have a problem after this se this season. But. Um, Actually, I don't think they're going. I think they're gonna. They're gonna. You know, come to some terms and sign. And the good news is that that means Dexter is probably gonna go on until season eight, which I think should be the cutoff point. I think see eight seasons for this show is good enough. Um, like I don't want season nine of Dexter. I can go with season eight. I can go wherever they go with this season, and then maybe set up the final season next season, and then have the final season. Um, but yeah. I think that's all I got. Um, I'll be back. Uh, excuse me. I'll be back um, tomorrow with uh, another Blu-ray column. I just got two new movies today, and I'm gonna do uh, those for tomorrow. Um, Rob's got some, Rob. You know, he just did a couple of uh, videos over the weekend. Um, I'll probably be doing these Dexter videos hopefully on Mondays instead of Tuesdays. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I might do a football video on Sunday from now on. I'm a Giants fan, so I might just do like a recap of the game on Sundays also. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, so I will see you guys. And um, hammer time.